Hello and welcome to ovesen.net. Today I have something very special and exciting to show you. It's uh, this one, an Amiga CD32. So the CD32 is uh, a games console uh, developed by Commodore uh, and released in uh, September of 1993. And this one uh, uses uh, CD-ROMs as a media format. It runs uh, Amiga OS 3.1 and uh, has a 2 MB of chip RAM. So uh, let's take a look at this one. So this 32-bit console seems to be in uh, nice condition it is of course uh, dirty and dusty it comes with a power supply and uh, amiga cd32 controller and also a few cds so um, i haven't tested it yet i don't know if it's uh, working or not uh, so uh, let's test see if it's uh, working so the plan for this uh, console uh, for me in this video is to restore it and uh, yeah make it look uh, shiny and new again and uh, maybe do some recapping so i'm connecting the power supply now and uh, yeah normally i wouldn't turn on a machine without uh, at least inspecting uh, the inside first but uh, Hey, this one is uh, quite new, so uh, I take it the chance. All right, uh, let's take a look at the different ports. And uh, first of all, it has a headset uh, port there, and then the back side has the power switch, uh, RF video, S video, and these are the, the regular composite video and audio. Uh, RCA jacks and uh, two joysticks port and this uh, auxiliary port I'm not really sure what uh, that is uh, used for besides that it has this uh, expansion port here so I guess you can use uh, the same uh, or at least some of the same uh, expansion gear as the Amiga 1200 perhaps so I'm connecting the composite uh, out and the audio so uh, now I'm ready to turn it on also this uh, controller or joystick is uh, connected uh, to the joystick port all right turning on So there is life, it actually uh, starts to boot. All right. I actually never had this kind of uh, console, uh, so I haven't uh, ever tested it before, but uh, this one looks uh, to be in good shape. So it starts to spin and uh, read uh, the CD-ROM. Hey, hey! There's obviously two games on this one. Uh, Diggers and, uh, and Oscar. So the controller doesn't seem to work. Maybe it should be in the other uh, port. So I'm switching it over. Nope. So the Commodore Amiga CD32 system was uh, codenamed Spellbound and it is a 32-bit video game console which was developed by Commodore of course and it was uh, released only in Europe, uh, Australia, Canada and Brazil in the late uh, 1993. 
it's based on the Commodore's AGA chipset and um, that's the same uh, as the uh, Amiga 1200 essentially and you can actually um, upgrade the CD32 with uh, uh, hardware like uh, keyboard and mouse and uh, yeah even hard drives the CD32 was never officially sold in the US because of uh, uh, that was in at the time when uh, uh, Commodore was uh, filed for bankruptcy so here are some details about the specification of the CD32 it runs Amiga OS 3.1 and it has a Motorola 68020 CPU running at uh, 14 megahertz and it has 2 meg of uh, RAM and the video resolution is um, uh, yeah up to 1280 times 512 so I couldn't get the controller to work but uh, hey maybe there's something wrong with the controller I'll have to look at that later but uh, first um, let's uh, take this apart and uh, do the usual cleaning and inspection stuff so let's see uh, the backside and uh, it says manufacture October 93 so this is a pretty early model uh, if I uh, remember correctly these were actually discontinued in 94 and uh, yeah I think they sold around 100,000 uh, in Europe and Canada and uh, Australia I think but not in the US anyway here's uh, some screws around the edge so uh, let's open this up and see what we can find inside all right let's see if we can uh, open this up and as usual i did not see any videos on youtube before i do this because uh, what's the fun in uh, watching others <laughs> so i'm not sure how you disconnect this uh, ribbon cable here so i'm gonna be careful not to to damage anything i'm gonna remove this uh, this shield here first and there's also two screws holding uh, the shield uh, down to the motherboard oh man there's even one more screw here i didn't notice <laughs> And then it came loose so that's the motherboard with the AGA chipset the, the advanced uh, graphics architecture uh, the most uh, modern one and here on the silk screen it says uh, Spellbound Revision 3 Spellbound was the code name for uh, the Amiga CD32 there's even a chip um, branded HP I don't know what uh, these chips are actually this this is the CPU the Motorola 68ECO20 so now we can get the PCB out of the case I guess unless it's screwed down someplace mm, is it? no no it's not just a little bit stuck as usual and the uh, PCB out of this uh, shielding well there's actually these hooks that uh, yeah they work against uh, pulling out the connectors here and uh, and thus they need to be bent back that's a strange uh, 
different way of doing it. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, that's the motherboard. Looks very nice. Okay, I'm gonna tear apart the rest of the console just so that I can uh, give it a good clean. So here's uh, four screws. These are of a different kind than, than the rest. And this is the CD-ROM drive and there, there's the laser so I'm gonna clean that one. Okay time to do a little cleaning of the plastics, a uh, little bit of dust and shit. Uh, I just used some uh, window cleaner called GIF Universal. This is very good for removing old fat and black stains on plastics. So everything looks uh, very nice on this um, board. I just rubbed a little cotton swab with uh, some alcohol and it is a bit dirty. So I'm just gonna clean this off. Then there's all these uh, caps. Uh, I uh, have uh, the kit, but uh, I have decided not to replace any of the caps uh, now because uh, they all look fine, there is no leakage anywhere, so uh, I'm gonna leave that out for another time. Then a little bit of electronic cleaner inside uh, all the different contacts the back side of the board is just the perfect and not dirty at all so just cleaning the contacts a little bit with some uh, IP next is the CD-ROM drive and um, yeah it's a Chinon and it looks uh, to be in very good shape too, so uh, not much to worry about that. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna clean uh, the dry mechanism at least, and uh, of course the laser. So I'm cleaning this uh, metal uh, rod that the, the laser has. Um, this module is uh, sliding on and also gonna also gonna lubricate it a little bit with some machine oil so I just have a tiny bit of uh, machine oil onto this uh, cotton swab this is oil meant for uh, sewing machine and then I just use a little bit onto this uh, metal uh, rod here. Yeah. Same goes with this uh, display board. It looks uh, very nice, but I'm just going to use a little bit of electronic cleaner to for the switches and uh, and the audio contact. All right, that's it for uh, the servicing of this. Uh, CD32. Not often I see machines that are so good in the condition um, after uh, this many years, uh, but uh, probably this one has uh, almost not been used ever. So, so I'm just gonna assemble the console now and uh, then I'll take a look at uh, the controller.
So this metal shield actually has a couple of uh, rust stains. So I'm just gonna scrape off and then I'm gonna use a little bit of, of rust remover. I just use this uh, rust remover. Um, yeah, just a tiny uh, amount. Then I just take it up into a cotton swab and uh, yeah, rub a little bit onto the stains. Then in with the, the drive. If I remember correctly, it should be this way. <laughs> yeah, of course, the laser should point down to the drive bay. So let me see if I can get this uh, ribbon cable back into its place. It's a little bit of a tight space. I lifted the contact and then just pushing it down. So I think it's all the way down and now I'm just gonna push the contact down to grip. So that's the console fully assembled and uh, I am now gonna do uh, just a quick test if it's uh, still working and then I'm gonna take a look at uh, this uh, controller or joystick uh, seems to be not working. Now before I turn on the console I'm gonna take a look at the power supply and uh, yeah for one thing this, this is not the original uh, plug for the mains and also seems to be a little bit dodgy with the not secured uh, the wires inside so I'm gonna fix that but otherwise it's uh, looking uh, fine a little bit uh, of cleaning then uh, it will shine so let's open up this uh, mains contact So it uh, seems like uh, the security, what you call it, this um, clamp, it's not been secured properly. So I'm just gonna push the cable a little bit in so that the black isolation is uh, through the clamp and then just uh, yeah, screw them down again. All right, that's better. I have hooked up the machine now. Let's see if it's still working. I got a bunch of this, uh, these CD32 gamer discs that seems to be demos of different games playable levels things like that yeah it still works <laughs> good i didn't uh, damage anything or
So it's a very silent uh, CD-ROM drive. So there's uh, an issue with uh, the joystick controller. I can move up and down, but I cannot select anything. None of those buttons are working. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at this one now. Oh, it actually seems to be working after all. Just uh, me that didn't understand how to operate it. You press the color button for uh, the selected color in the menu. So now if I press the yellow, it should start uh, rally championships. And then Press and hold yellow. All right, how do you play? <laughs> so that was a pretty poor. Uh, uh, motor sound from this game <laughs> so the controller is actually working somewhat uh, needs to be pressed pretty hard and I don't know what's uh, what's the problem when I tested it first time but the uh, only thing I did was to to use some uh, electronic cleaner on uh, this contact and the other contact as well so there's a few screws here So this actually seems to have been opened before because uh, there are two screws missing. I'm pretty sure there should be a screw there and also there. Not there. All right, that's the inside of the controller. It's looking uh, good, has uh, two screws, a little electronics. Uh, Manufactured 23rd September 1993. So I'm gonna remove the buttons and yeah, there's two screws here. I'm gonna unscrew so I can free up the plastics. That I can clean them. Okay, let's uh, lift up the board and uh, yeah. All right, so that's the underside and it is a bit dirty actually, so need some cleaning. These are metal uh, contacts, so uh, should not be a problem to clean them with uh, alcohol. Looking at the different uh, buttons, you can see there is a little bit of shit here and there. So I'm gonna take all this into uh, a little bit of soapy water and get them cleaned. So on the PCB, I just spray a little uh, isopropanol and uh, wipe off the contacts all the plastic parts has been cleaned and uh, came out very nice from the hot water so i'm just gonna assemble the controller now and then we're good to test And now the tricky part to get this PCB down and to make it fit with uh, all the controls.
so I struggle a bit with this cable but I uh, I looked back at the video and this cable should actually be above the PCB and on this side here so now I think it's coming So this was actually missing a couple of screws, but I don't have those kinds of screws, so I can't really uh, add new ones, but uh, I think it holds uh, fairly good anyway. All right, so that was the controller. Final touch to clean the cable. All right, I'm just gonna test the controller a little bit, and uh, then I think I can conclude this video. Let's. Uh, Test this uh, gloom. So it actually boots uh, after you press the selection, and then you have to hold uh, the colored button, but the colored button, and uh, it will boot into uh, the title you selected. Gloom. Yeah, controller seems to work just fine. All right, uh, this one does not seem to work. Uh, I see something happening, but the screen <laughs> size is... Uh, uh, something is wrong, so... All right, this is a demo of uh, dinosaurs. Just a sample. So I actually want to test if it's possible to just burn uh, a game for the CD32 from uh, a file uh, to a CD-ROM. So uh, with uh, just a little bit of searching I found uh, almost all titles for the Amiga CD32. So here's uh, one game here, the Pinball Illusions. So if I open this um, you see there's a lot of bin files. Uh, different tracks and there's also this uh, Q file. So I actually got a bunch of old CDRs. I think it's uh, yeah years since I used one uh, last time but uh, let's see if this works. So now I'm using another machine that actually has a CD burner and uh, here's the Pinball Illusions game that I downloaded and all these bin files and the Q file is actually a, a CD image file and to burn that you cannot simply uh, copy those files to a CD-ROM, you need to uh, burn them with a CD burner program like this alcohol 120 percent there's of course a lot of different programs you can use i just downloaded this uh, trial version uh, uh, that has no limitations uh, for 15 days and uh, now i'm gonna burn uh, the image so i just start this uh, image burning um, and select the q file And then it lists uh, all the different tracks and they are actually, uh, as you can see, audio <laughs> mode. So yeah, then next. And then it has already selected the, the CD burner, which is a DVD burner, but it supports uh, CDRs. So then I just, uh, Press start. 
So now it's uh, burning away. And we're done. The recording is completed. So let me test if this actually worked. Yes, it did. <laughs> So there's the pinball illusion. So I actually don't know where the source for uh, this copy is, but uh, and whether it's cracked or not. Uh, so I'm just using it for testing purposes only, so I'm not gonna actually play and enjoy this game. Alright, that was the Amiga CD32, a funny little console from the uh, 90s with a bunch of Amiga history inside it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, not a repair video this time, but uh, at least some demonstration and uh, a little trip back uh, the memory lane. So uh, I wish I'd had this console when I was uh, younger, but I never did. And Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.